Hello everyone, and welcome to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3, and in this episode we begin with a maneuver for MapSat 1. We've time warped quite a lot, actually, uh, and that brings us closer to our Mars window. There's some messages there. But anyway, um, we, we see this curved horizon here and that we're 2,000 kilometers above something. So I believe this is Jupiter, but I haven't actually looked. So I, I'm judging from the speed, too. So let's point out the node RCS on and get this started before bad things happen. Okay, ignition. And yeah, I just jumped to the node one minute before it, so... I think we're capturing around Jupiter, and I did ignore max temp there so that the RTGs wouldn't explode. So yeah, I think this is making orbit, and then we have other plans afterwards. But my main focus has been designing those craft for the Mars window, and boy, I I have got a lot of craft <laughs> that we're going to be sending over to Mars. Uh, so people wanted to see a Kerbal landing. I'm not entirely sure we're ready for it, but um, at the very least, we'll be trying to send Kerbals over there to Mars orbit, and if there's a landing, that's uh, that'll be a bonus. And I'll explain once we launch those craft. But I do want to keep them safe. So far, we've only lost Jeb in this install and in this save. So let's let's just keep it to Jeb. So we've got this weird inclination issue. We do want to get around one of the moons because this has one of these uh, survey scanners. And the question is, which moon would be best? Well, let me do some plotting, and then we'll see what we can manage with 3,887 meters per second, which isn't much. Also, um, I hope that imbalance of Arizona and N204 is just because we have another stage that has a different mix. Well, we're probably going to have to get Callisto's help with this, um, flying by it a few times to bring our orbit down before doing the final retro burn, because otherwise we're about 100 meters per second short. Thankfully, I finally got some experience doing that with Io. Uh, Io is a little bit more influential as far as bringing orbits down and everything. Um, not too good with much else, but I mean, it's really hard to get to. But during the Twitch live streams, uh, we had a probe that was supposed to get into orbit around one of the moons of Jupiter, and it just uh, didn't end up having. I forget what fault it was. Probably test flight killed an engine or something like that. And uh, yeah, so we actually flew by Io like seven, eight times. Um, it still hasn't made orbit around uh, anything yet, but at least uh, that gave me some experience about bringing orbits down. It's really tedious with the moons of Jupiter, which is why I usually don't want to do it. But um, if, if it saves us 100 meters per second, it's definitely worth it in this case. It'll probably mean the difference between making orbit around Callisto and not. So, yeah, we're doing this uh, first burn here, uh, 900 meters per second to boost our orbit up to the orbit of Callisto. Uh, this is an inclination change, 404 meters per second to flatten it out with respect to Callisto. And then the rest is all timing and uh, trying to get Callisto to bring our orbit down. I don't know how influential Callisto will be or how tedious that's going to be, but um, yeah, I mean, we might have to do an initial... We're probably going to have to do initial burn so that we don't have a 312 day uh, delay between maneuvers with this thing. Otherwise, I'll completely forget what we're doing with it. That's the problem with uh, doing the multiple flyby method of uh, capturing. But okay, we've got an alarm in 89 days, and that'll be well after the Mars and Jupiter launches, so that's safe. And the uh, next thing we'll do is uh, MapSat 1A. Okay, here we are with MapSat 1A, and it would be uh, tough for this to get into orbit around any of Jupiter's moons because it only has 4,066 and it hasn't even captured yet, so definitely not enough here. But fortunately, we're not supposed to capture around Jupiter's moons, it looks like, because we've got an encounter with Saturn. So it's just going to pass by, and what we would like to do actually here is maybe tweak that Saturn approach so that we can hit Titan, and then this can uh, do a mapping of Titan with the resource scanner. So obviously we need to fix this, otherwise it's not going to be in the plane of uh, 
plane of Titan at all. So let me work on that and then we'll do that burn. Okay, I've plotted a combination of burns. First of all, a 32.2 meter per second correction before we get to Jupiter periapsis. And that alters our Jupiter periapsis from 1,584, uh, well, 1.584 million kilometers uh, to 1.514 million kilometers. So you can't really see the adjusted one, but it's an imperceptible sort of adjustment at Jupiter. There we go, 1.514. So just a mild correction there. And the result is that we go from this pass around Saturn to a close approach at Saturn which will allow us to capture the fuel for capture says 716 into this orbit uh, indicated by the red line and so so far that's let's say 750 altogether a uh, 460 there so we're talking about 1200 let's say 1300 just for safety's sake then an inclination change here um, 786 brings us to 2100 and then another uh, 1819 not including any additional passes around uh, Titan in order to help us out uh, will probably get us into orbit around Titan judging from the orbits and so well that's just spot on 4000 so so yeah it's going to be a tight business still we could aim for Iapetus instead out here and that might be a little bit easier, uh, but Titan is of course more attractive. So, but we'll see once we get there what the uh, details are. That's still three years away. Let's just take care of this first burn first, and I will get rid of the other plans for now. Well, a little bit more inclination than what I would have liked, and well, that's crashing into Saturn. Okay, so. We could probably flatten that out once we reach Saturn SOI here. Yeah, that'll be a mild extra burn there. But it's probably too sensitive where we are right now. Yeah, and uh, we'll fiddle around with that to match the inclination of Titan, I think. That's probably too much. I think it's more like this. Titan's tilted with respect to the other moons of of Saturn. Iapetus is even worse. Okay, so let me add an alarm for the maneuver that will indicate entry into Saturn SOI. And that's all the way over there. We don't need this maneuver node anymore. And we are clear to do Saturn, uh, not Saturn, Mars things. We're not going to see this pass by Jupiter because I don't think there's any signs to be done. It's so far out and it's not encountering any moons. So yeah, we'll just let it pass on by and hope that it's safe. All right, so here we are with our first launch to Mars. You can see that we're starting off eight days before the technical window here. Then again, that window is not a transfer window planner window, so that's a bit of a problem. I just noticed that. I probably should have gotten a transfer window planner window. And, well, let's just add and see. Well, okay, we're closer to that window than I would have liked. Uh, hopefully we have enough time to roll all these missions out and get them underway. Because, yeah, we've got a lot of missions. So this is a, a port. This is a station for the moon. This will be, uh, not Moonport, this will be Marsport 1. We've got a backup one. And then we have two light landers, two Ares Pod Gs, one Ares Pod A, and two UDMH depots, all for Mars. So that's a lot. And, uh, well, this is, this is a Saturn V, uh, or as I call it, Fiji 551. So five F1 engines on the first stage, five J2 engines on the second stage, and one J2 engine on the third stage. The timing is a little bit different because uh, we're using F1As and uh, J2Ss. So uh, the first stage and the second stage actually burn for slightly less time 
because of their higher thrust. And uh, yeah, other than that, we should be good. Let's get this thing going. I don't think I... Oh yes, uh, this one still has the Saturn Instrument Unit on the third stage. But on other variants, I might move that down and just use a Delta Avionics package up there because we don't really need the heavy Saturn instrument unit all the way up there. But we'll save that for later. And I think uh, that'll be a fine place to load up this script. I already uh, inputted it in. So run VG551. But let's line up with the moon and everything. This is the first time in playing this career mode that I've wished that I had more than one launch pad. I know it's possible, uh, but I haven't actually wanted an, an extra launch pad until now. So here we are. Okay, here we go. First launch of a Saturn V in this save, as far as I remember. The station module looks a lot like the station modules we've launched before. So you noted that we have some duplicates of each mission, and the basic idea is that at least one of each type has to work before we launch the Ares Pod A. So at least one Marsport 1, one Light Lander, one UDMH Depot, and one Ares Pod G. and then that'll be good enough to launch the Ares Pod A with the crew. That doesn't mean the Ares Pod A is, you know, gotta be safe in that case. But the Ares Pod A mission contains the, all the supplies. None of these others contains the life support supplies. All of the other missions just increase the capabilities of the crewed mission that we're gonna send over to Mars. None of the other missions is required to have them survive and come back. Given that, that means that they can't really survive on the surface for very long. So, since Ares Pod A is the one carrying all the supplies, we're not carrying those, those supplies down to the surface yet. Ares Pod G is the one that's supposed to land on the surface. And they'll have to rendezvous with that, or ill rendezvous with them, in order to have them reach the surface. So they'll transfer to that, and then use that to go down, and then come back up again. UDMH Depot is just for emergency refueling, and it will probably dock with Marsport 1, if possible. Light Lander is for Phobos and Deimos, so we'll obviously have time. Since we're not going to be able to stay on the surface of Mars for very long given the supply situation, okay, uh, standard shutdown of the center engine on a Saturn V is nominal, and that's to limit G-forces, though it doesn't do a very good job of that. Anyway, the Light Lander is for Phobos and Deimos, and for other rendezvous, that's what it's for. Okay, the J2s. And we have a good ignition. Everything seems alright as far as our velocities. This starts out at 0.87 Gs. Okay, I'll manually stage the fairings. So you can see the configuration of this, uh, a small sort of thing, big solar panels because we're relying on the sun in orbit of Mars, which is half the strength as it is around the Earth. We've got our supplies here, food, water, and oxygen. Uh, it won't tell us how much that is because we don't have any Kerbals on board, but it's, uh, it's a decent amount at least. And we've got Arizona 204 and uh, Gemini Lander engines on the outboard here to control this when it uh, captures around Mars. Importantly, we don't carry much ablator. Uh, in fact, I don't think we need any ablator in order to capture around Mars with this. But I carried a little bit just in case. The, the crewed mission actually does not carry any ablator at all. Which is uh, an interesting choice on my part. Daring choice, if you will. We'll see how it works out for us. As usual with the Saturn V, uh, the second stage will 
bring us short of orbit and the third stage has to complete orbit but the third stage has to do a little bit less than it did for the moon because we need more of the fuel there to get to Mars. And of course the total payload capacity of this for Mars even with the upgraded engines is not that great. I mean it's uh, let's see if we can get a read on that. Uh, whereas I think it's uh, 24 tons. Oh, uh, maybe 33 tons. So it's 45 tons to the moon, and I'm betting on 33 tons here for for Mars. I forget if this this 48 tons probably indicates the structure of the third stage as well. It's not the case that we're using Saturn V's all the way. Um, for Mars ports we are, but for the light landers, which are just for Phobos and Deimos, which carry two crew by the way, um, we're using Fiji two R1s, so two F1s and then one RD270, and then uh, J2. And then uh, Ares Pot A does use a Saturn V. UDMH Depot uses three F1s and RD270 and then uh, J2. We are only aiming to send two crew to Mars this time. Our build list is clearer right now, by the way, so we're not building anything at the moment. We still managed to get done with all of those craft before before this launch window. I'm gonna need to step up my designing. We made like duplicates of everything and we still had time left over. Oh, and incidentally, we do not set, uh, shut down the center engine on the second stage here. And that's because it's not efficient, and we're hoping that the structural problems that led to that shutdown would have been resolved by 1979. With the J2Ss. One would hope. Okay, our third stage engine is lit. And you can see actually we have a lot of margin here and that's just in case some problem occurred. Um, we only need 500 more for orbit so we've got 5,000 meters per second to transfer over to Mars. We could probably carry more than we've, we're carrying right now. Right now, so. And after that 5,000 we still have 2,000 and we're using heat shield to capture so. We have some flexibility here. Not so much flexibility on the crewed mission, by the way. Basically, the crewed mission is not going to be doing any rendezvous. Everything is going to be rendezvousing with it. And so if, you know, they want to dock to the station, the station is going to have to come to them. I've made sure that we have the appropriate antennae on everything, by the way. Except for the crewed pod, which we wouldn't need uh, control of. Okay, good times. That is done. And now I have to plot for Mars for the first time in a while, and we have lots more of those plottings to do. Well, one downside to this particular transfer is that we get there after 295 days. It doesn't particularly matter whether our Kerbals arrive quickly or slowly because they have the same amount of life support either way, and the journey back is the same either way. So the important thing here is that our approach is going to enable us to be in line with Phobos and Deimos. And so we see periapsis here. And that means that if we capture right there, our apoapsis will be best able to allow us to correct inclination, or at least the ascending node is reasonably close to the apoapsis instead of somewhere inconvenient. Uh, we'll go with this. And hopefully that'll be good enough. It's just really important that everything is going to be in the plane of Phobos and Deimos if uh, we get we want the maximum bang for a buck here. I have obviously opted not to use the Nerva for this and actually for any of the missions and that's mainly because I wanted to see what we could get away with without using it before we opted to use it. So next time we'll will make use of the nuclear stuff but for now I want to just make a run with it uh, without using that. Also rendezvousing with Nerva 
is a pain in the rear end. You'll note that all of the mission components here are Mars orbit rendezvous. There is no Earth orbit rendezvous at all. And ignition. Actually, probably that's a little bit early. Because we do have 5,000 meters per second there. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. We're probably a little bit off here and we'll need a correction. And shut down. Okay, let's see. What did we end up with? Well, we didn't end up with a Mars encounter at all. Well, fortunately, it's a reasonably large correction of 200 meters per second. And I say fortunately because if it was a small correction, I'd be resorting to using the RCS thrusters and uh, wouldn't be able to use the main engine. We still have a single ignition remaining on this J2, and we might as well use it. So let's time warp a little bit. It's mostly a radial burn because, of course, the timing was off, and when the timing is off, that means you've got a radial burn. Well, any way you look at it, we should probably decouple the S4B stage first and then fix this all up. So, I don't know if this is the best direction to decouple it in right now, but... Still got plenty of fuel in here, but all right, we'll do this. Okay, well, I just did a correction burn that was properly plotted at the right time and everything, and it's betrayed me as the best thing I can... Wait, maybe maybe if I continue to... Oh, okay. It's only doing the inclination, but now... Because we, we got to the right periapsis, and our inclination was totally off, and it hadn't changed where the maneuver node location is and it's paused right now because it's probably auto saving it's just messed up I think I'll just do a correction bird in Mars SOI to fix all this we'll also need to do a final check to make sure that uh, we're not crashing into the moon of course so it'll just be a minor correction at Mars and we'll decide there exactly what altitude we want to enter in uh, let me add that alarm. 293 days, though. It's a long time. We know we're at the Mars window. This is all configured properly. Okay, indeed, its moon periapsis is 43,000 kilometers, so no problem there. And we'll get on with the next mission. Okay, we actually rolled this out in a day, but we had to wait for the launch pad reconditioning, so we're losing time here. And that's... Uh, gonna cause problems for the subsequent missions but I'll admit that this doesn't look particularly good this is the Ares Pod G which is based on the Luna Pod G that you may remember and it's just got a little bit more fuel uh, actually we'll talk more about it once it decouples but yeah it's 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 an awkward looking sort of thing and it's launching on the Fiji 2R1 to give it enough Delta V to reach Mars so let's run that launch script PG2R1 no kerbals on board of course and this hinges on the Gemini capsule this Gemini capsule being able to work without kerbals on board I've had trouble with that before uh, even with the avionics being alright but hopefully it's okay this time it's got a lot of thrust weight ratio at the start 1.8 So everything, if everything works out, this would be the craft that they would take to land on Mars. And then, of course, get back up again. But it doesn't have that much food, water, and oxygen, which is why they can't stay on Mars for a long time. We could have sent more food, water, and oxygen with it, but then everything would have to be larger. This currently only has seven days worth. It's possible that we won't even have uh, two Kerbals land on Mars at all, and all we'll do is do a dry run with this and see if it's safe to land on Mars with it. Okay, booster's set. There we go. Currently, this version is configured to bring this back down, but 
I don't think stage recovery accepts that this would survive. I think it uh, thinks that it'll blow up, so... And probably that's true. We're getting a little bit too far out to allow for survival of this. You'll notice no ablator on the heat shield that is supposed to allow us to capture around Mars. In 1.2.2 that has worked out for me. I don't know if it's different in 1.1.3. Still a risk. Okay, separation of the engine part. And then the stage. And then ignition of the J2. I have to say, this seems to have less delta V than I was hoping for. We'll see what it ends up with in orbit, but this isn't great right now. Okay, well, it's made orbit, but this is not a particularly good situation to transfer over to Mars. Not if we want to keep all the fuel in the pod for the landing and ascent, which, you know, it needs about 4,500 for that, and that's what we see here. So, this was a misjudged launch based on numbers from Mechjeb in the VAB that I thought were nice, but apparently not nice enough. So, I'm wondering what to do about this. It's possible we could just send something up to refuel this. Uh, let's pop off the cap. A couple node. How quickly could we send something to get some fuel up here is sort of the question. It'd be a shame to lose this, and we don't need that much. We need maybe a th another thousand meters per second would do the trick. Um, yeah, this was sort of hastily done, I feel. Is there another stage in here somewhere? Probably not. Just bad planning on my part. Okay, well, that's more complicated. Let's not waste time. We'll need some time to build the mission to rendezvous with this. And we'll need to just roll out the next thing. Otherwise, we're going to lose time here. So we'll roll out a light lander. And let me get constructing on a refueler for this. Let's see. It's tough to say exactly how much fuel we need. But it'd be nice to give this another... Let's just say exactly what it has right now. 54,000 hydrogen and 18,000 liquid oxygen. All right, we'll aim for that. So, yeah, rolling out the light lander. All right, so I already built a refueler. That's going to take four days to construct, but obviously we needed to edit the other Ares Pod G that we had already built to make sure that it could reach Mars. And I've done a few things. First of all, I extended this tank. So that uses the full 10 minutes of burn time that uh, the J2S can provide. And hopefully that'll be a good thing. And it turns out extending a tank doesn't take too much by way of extra time. An hour and three minutes. But I decided to record this part because of a curiosity. Oh, and I removed the recoverability bit on the bottom of this. I haven't decided to change these boosters because uh, the launch script timing will be different. And I don't want to rename this uh, some other launcher. But uh, a curiosity. Uh, it takes 1 hour and 3 minutes and 32 seconds to edit this right now. But let's say I change the size of this tank. Right now I already changed the utilization, by the way. But if I make this tank bigger, you can see that the time it takes to change this craft actually goes down. And I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a, it's a completely different tank. We haven't used a tank, let's say, at 5.7 uh, meters diameter. There is no craft that I have that has that dimension. So it's not picking up on some other craft. And you can see even for the inner stage, if I increase the size, it decreases the time it takes to edit it. And yeah, that, that's just a puzzle. I don't know why. So, yep, I, I guess we'll try this. Uh, if I sum it all up, 
let's see. 7,237 plus 3391 plus 2355. We get, and then if we subtract 4,000 from it, it's still not great. I'm really hoping that the initial thrust to weight ratio will help, but it's about 9,000. Uh, not including the 4,000 we want for Mars transfer. It's still better than what we had with the other mission, but I don't know if it's going to be enough, especially since the thrust weight ratio here is pretty low. All right, well, we'll see. Let's save these edits. All right, here we are with the light lander meant for Phobos and Deimos, again with the Fiji 2R1, but the light lander is, as it says, light. So hopefully this one will work out and have enough delta V in orbit in order to transfer to Mars. So without further ado, run Fiji to R1. And this one still has the recovery package on the bottom, even though that's probably futile. Considering how quick it was to edit the other one, maybe we should just remove that on the other light lunar, uh, not light lunar lander, light lander uh, launch. Well, that'll be a consideration. It's not that much mass down there, so it wouldn't be too much of a benefit. Okay, booster separation. There we go. Okay, and that's not exactly what I wanted to happen right there, but I think we'll be alright. Okay. Good. And ignition. Alright. Well, that was more steps than I intended, but we're alright. The J2 is ignited, and we continue to orbit. Okay, we have a shutdown. And in orbit, we have 3,769 meters per second, which hopefully will be enough to transfer this over to Mars. Let's find out. All right, the plot that we have uh, will take 3,612 meters per second, which it, we have enough for. But it does take a long time to reach Mars, about nine months. It's going to be a nine-month trip like the other one. And I would prefer if all our missions didn't take nine months to get there, but if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. It's possible that with uh, another space station mission, the next uh, Mars station mission, we could probably get that one over quicker because that has 5,000 meters per second in order to transfer. All right, so here we go, selling the fuel down. So taking a closer look at this, we've got an Agena core on this one because it was more than 10 tons and we couldn't use the Delta core. Uh, it's got a Mark 1 lander can advanced, so that's two Kerbals worth of space. No ladder, but that's because it uh, decouples off of here. This is extra fuel that is being cross-fed in for the advanced Gemini lander engines, so there's no additional engine on this stage. It's just a fuel tank with some RCS ports. And of course a heat shield for capture. No ablator though, again. I'm sure hoping that the situation here is the same as it was in 1.2.2, where we didn't need ablator. Um, also sort of hoping that the general capsule shape I've fitted everything in ensures that it will be safe when trying to capture around Mars. That's another question. Otherwise, the, these are actually OP. The advanced Gemini lander engines are overpowered for landing on Phobos and Deimos. Probably for landing on Phobos and Deimos, we're just going to be using the RCS quads, actually. Um, the, the advanced Gemini lander engines are probably more for rendezvous burns and stuff like that. It's, of course, possible to just have the Kerbal land themselves on Phobos and Deimos via EVA, but we'll get to that if we need to. This will certainly be in orbit around those moons either way. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And shutdown. Okay, it says 4.1 remaining. What's our actual situation here? Uh, well, we have an encounter at least. That's always good. But 
we're definitely going to need to replot that. All right, so let me do that. Okay, after a somewhat arduous RCS burn, we've got our approach correct, but of course I have to decouple now, and that's going to throw everything off. Uh, why don't I... Well, that tank is full. These tanks are not. So let me just do a one-to-one -one topping off there. Okay, separation. RCS forward. Check that we still have a heat shield. All right. Check what our approach is looking like right now. Well, we can fix that once we get there. 287 days. So we just need to back off just a little bit there. 2.4 meters per second should do the trick. Uh, maybe a little bit higher. So that our apoapsis is in line for a future inclination change. And we can set that as an alarm. So, two out of three missions uh, successful as far as having a transfer so far. As you can see, this light light lander, I want to say light lunar lander, but light lander um, has 3,800 meters per second of delta V. Some of that is in this tank and will, of course, have to be shoved off at a certain point. But, yeah, it's got, it's got something to it. It can get stuff done around uh, Mars orbit, and in particular, it could be used as a vehicle to transfer the Kerbals uh, to and from the station if it turns out that the stations are in a different orbit or just, you know, even slightly off from where our return capsule, the, the um, Ares Pod A, will be. Because the Ares Pod A can't use any of its own fuel to maneuver anywhere. So it's just going to have to stay in whatever orbit it happens to be in until it needs to depart for Earth again. So if the Kerbals want to get anywhere, everything else has to rendezvous with them. And if it turns out that the stations, we don't want to use their fuel for some reason, this will be the way for them to get from the Ares Pod A to the station or from the Ares Pod A to Phobos or Deimos. So we've got two of these going over there. There's one and then we have another one queued up. But for now, I think we'll leave it here with this on its way to Mars. And next time, we'll continue with our Mars launches. Uh, we need a UDMH depot. And after that, uh, we'll try an Ares Pod G again, the edited one. Because I think our Hydrolox refueler will still take time to build. Once we've got an Ares Pod G and a UDMH depot on its way, on their way, we'll be able to launch the Ares Pod A with our two Kerbals. But I want some support there for when they arrive, and that's why we're launching everything else. Okay, so with that being the plan, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.